When Luis Reyes learned that he'd be in jail for the next 30 years, you knew just by his body language the bailiffs would have to hold him. As the door shut, Reyes's mom wailed, and then her son screamed. Judge Michael Andrews didn't have any sympathy for the minor that at age 14 allegedly robbed, beat, and raped a woman who's now 91 years old. Reyes, along with Carlos Fernandez, who is celebrating his 17th birthday today in shackles, both pleaded no contest and got the same sentence. We think they deserve long prison time. If not for the United States case of Graham, uh, we would ask the court to sentence him to life imprisonment. Prosecutors wanted life in prison, but a Supreme Court ruling means minors can't receive the sentence. Jonathan Rodriguez, who was also involved, made a plea deal and got 20 years. Tell me where the freaks at. New anger today over the murder of a high school student on prom day. 16-year-old Marin Sanchez was killed by a classmate because she wouldn't go to the dance with him. Now the victim's family says the murderer's sentence is not enough. CBS 2 Scott Rappaport was in the Connecticut courtroom. Sentenced to 25 years for murder, 19-year-old Christopher Plaskin uttered just five words in court. Thank you, Your Honor. Demurely declining the offer to speak about the heinous stabbing death of 16-year-old classmate Marin Sanchez, whom authorities say he killed inside their high school on prom day two years ago because she wouldn't go to the prom with him with savage fury. The ferocity of this attack and that it all occurred in a mere 33 seconds that she could be stabbed on multiple occasions. The barbarity of that shocks the conscience. In the courtroom, off camera, before the judge, the victim's mother, Donna Cimarelli, refused to discuss Plaskin, instead describing her daughter as the love of my life, my best friend. She was destined for greatness. And later, she spoke to reporters for the very first time when I asked her what was in her heart. My feelings are is that Marin is in my soul. She walks with me every day and we will be doing a lot of magnificent things in the future with her leading. Back in March, Plaskin pled no contest to the crime in exchange for the 25-year sentence. His lawyer said he was considering an insanity defense. Christopher was profoundly ill on April 25th, 2014. As he told the probation officers each and every day, all he thinks about is this should not have happened. Is there anything you guys want to say? Plaskin's family left court without comment. Under the terms of the sentencing, Plaskin could be eligible for parole in 13 years, having already served two years while waiting for trial. 22-year-old Patrick Kemp faces murder because his friend died during a robbery. Police say he was involved in. I was in court when Kemp heard the charges he faces. He frowned up at some of the allegations and even had a smirk on his face at times that didn't sit well with the homeowner who frowned his friend wounded in his driveway. He had that look on his face, but he didn't care. That's what Archie Booker thought when he saw 22-year-old Patrick Kemp smirking when he went before a judge on murder charges. Kemp also frowned when the judge read part of the allegations. The homeowner identified as Michael Richards did shoot Williams as he began entering the window. Kemp faces murder charges after Riverdale police say this homeowner shot and killed 19-year-old John Dexter Williams on Birch Circle Tuesday before noon. In court, the judge explained that Williams and Kemp went to the home with a plan to break into it. It says that you did knock on the front door of the location while the co-perpetrator, John Williams, did break through a window in the rear of the location. That's when the homeowner shot Williams. Kemp was apprehended later. After Williams was shot, he collapsed in Archie Booker's driveway. Booker was so shaken by what happened, he posted this on Facebook. To my young black brothers, you know, it's not worth it. It's just not worth breaking in folks' homes because people are not going to stand for that. A teenage killer officially sentenced to death. A judge agreed with a Warren County jury which sentenced 19-year-old Austin Myers to death. He is now the youngest person on death row in Ohio. Not on your side's Jay Warren was there as a mother pleaded for her son's life. Austin Myers showed no emotion as the death sentence was imposed. In fact, he showed no emotion throughout the entire course of the trial. 
Today, in a last-ditch effort, Austin Myers stood up and asked Judge Donald Oda to spare his life. I think there's a lot of good things I can do with my life if you allow me to keep my life. Myers and his co-defendant Timothy Mosley killed 18-year-old Justin Back during a robbery attempt at his home in Waynesville. Today, the judge imposed the jury's recommendation of death. The court finds that the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the aggravating circumstance outweighs the mitigating factor. Therefore, the sentence of death shall be imposed upon Austin Gregory Myers on the charge of aggravated murder. Myers once again showed no emotion. Out of touch with reality, that's how prosecutor David Fornshell describes him. During the trial, he actually had a conversation, a jail call with his dad, where he agreed that his plea agreement would be that if we dismissed all charges against him, that he wouldn't sue me for wrongful imprisonment. Killer Margaret Allen apologized in court today and asked that her life be spared. That's when a prosecutor let her have it. I know this has not been easy, but I want you to know that you are perfect. Among the first words the public has heard from Margaret Allen through her tears is that she's sorry for the murder of Wenda Wright. Allen said she shouldn't be put to death for something she didn't do. A jury has already convicted Allen of strangling her housekeeper and pouring bleach and other chemicals on her after accusing her of stealing. A prosecutor questioned whether she really is sorry. Did you feel sorry when you said, thank God that's over? No, that's not true. I didn't do that. I didn't say that. The prosecutor pointed out Allen's own young daughter was present at the torture. Your daughter talked about what you'd asked her to do, go get some tape so that you could tape up your friend, right, the, the one that you felt so sorry for. I wasn't never no killer, no murderer. I was always a loving, caring person. The judge will consider the testimony in deciding whether to follow the jury's recommendation of death for Allen. The victim's common-law husband and relatives watched it all, and when it came time for the husband to speak, he looked Allen straight in the eye. I'm, I'm angry about it, yes, but um, I forgive you. Allen will be sentenced in February. At 6, my interview with the victim's husband. You get to see two very different faces of this car thief. On the left, Ryan Stone bragging about his crimes to a female visitor in jail. And on the right, Stone crying in court as he learned he will spend the rest of his life locked up. It's for a chase and crime spree that went all the way from Longmont to Parker. Today, we learn much more about this dramatic case. And Denver 7 reporter Mark Stewart joins us now with more on the story. Mark, he doesn't seem very, didn't seem very remorseful before today. Indeed, Ann. In fact, you could argue the man behind the wheel here was money hungry. Just released recordings reveal he wanted to profit from all of the clicks of the chase received on our own Denver 7 YouTube channel. A high-speed chase through five metro Denver counties. At times, cars were ditched and drivers thrown out the door. At one point, a four-month-old boy was strapped in a back seat. Yeah, my lawyer told me I made the news in the UK and Australia. For the first time since last year's chase, we are seeing a jailhouse conversation. Driver Ryan Stone hoped to profit from his internet fame after the video was posted online. You get paid by YouTube. So, uh, Channel 7 News, I believe, is going to be the one that gets paid for that. Well, um, I'm going to contact Channel 7 News. During his sentencing in court, Stone made an apology, yet wouldn't take responsibility, blaming his escapade on drugs. He asked the judge to give him a break. I pray you leave me time to start a family of my own with my beautiful wife. That didn't happen. Stone was sentenced to 160 years in prison. Those Angels up there actually pulled me out of the way. Trooper Bellum and he almost died. Stone struck him while he was trying to throw out stop sticks. I probably wear this badge, and I want to continue to be able to do so, to be able to return to full active duty uh, in the next couple of months. A crime spree caught from the sky, ending with a career criminal going nowhere but prison. This guy is a menace. And he is gone from us now, and we are better for it. Rackman received four life without parole sentences plus 20 years. But for family members of the victims, even that is not enough. It's uncivilized. I mean, it's just, you know, but uh, yeah, he is who he is.
John Sanchez is the father of 22-year-old Christy Sanchez. She was one of the four murder victims. Rackman admitted being the trigger man in the deaths of Sanchez, 47-year-old Walter Burnell, and 43-year-old Jacob Rodimich, and ordering Valencia Williams to kill Haley Navarro. Her family is still distraught over those circumstances. She knew she was going to die. She knew. I know she knew. It hurts. I'm sorry it hurts. Rackerman did address the court and said, I didn't mean for it to happen and I apologize. That's all I got to say. Navarro's 16-year-old sister spoke directly to the defendant from the witness stand and said his answer gave her a little piece of justice. Him listening to me and him actually responding. What did he, how did he respond? I asked him if it was really all worth it and he shaked his head no at me. There was tight security. Everyone in the gallery had to go through metal detectors to get into the courtroom. There has been bad blood between the victim's family members and Rackman's family. The convicted killer's friend still doesn't believe he did it and is covering for someone else. If you ain't got your word and you're not loyal and you're a rat or two-faced or kind of iffy, you don't make it out here. You don't have that chance. He never stood a chance against this, and he's never coming home. The judge is recommending that Rackman serve his sentence in the Wabash Valley Correctional Facility. And right now at 530, it was a day filled with outbursts inside a Broward County courtroom. The man found guilty of a deadly shooting inside a Dunkin' Donuts took the stand. His name is James Harrard. He's a former gang member. He was previously convicted for a brutal Thanksgiving Day armed robbery, also convicted of another crime, a murder, and the jury recommended the death sentence for that. But today he was back in court trying to get that overturned. Team 6 reporter Sharon Lawson is live outside the courthouse and joins us with the new details. Sharon? Well, during James Harrard's trial, he never got the chance to testify. So today was his day to state his case in front of the judge before the judge hands down his sentence. And you would be surprised to hear what Harrard had to say. In what is supposed to be convicted killer James Harrard's last chance to escape the jury's recommendation of a death sentence, Harrard took to the stand and said this. I'll say truly, I'm not asking you to spare me. Sounds bizarre. Listen to the reason why. Because I know the Supreme Court, you know what I mean, won't allow me to die for something that I didn't commit. While Harrard didn't pull the trigger in the 2008 murder of 39-year-old Eric Jean-Pierre, who was gunned down while he walked home from work, prosecutors say Harrard, along with several other members of a gang, were part of a body count competition, where Therod Bell was the alleged trigger man, adding Harrard pushed Bell to commit the crime, making him just as well, I mean, they're, like, they're claiming that I encouraged Therod Bell to shoot someone. And... How I did that, I, I don't know. Throughout the morning, both before and after Harrard testified, the defense brought up numerous people, many of them convicted criminals who knew Harrard, saying he was a motivator, tutor, counselor, an overall good guy. Uh, teaching people how to read and stuff. Oh, yeah, he'll be a big guy to um, President Tulsa. He was helping out and you know, trying to keep everybody focused in line. So. The testimony brought Harrard's mom to tears, overwhelmed with what her son now faces. Harrard was one of several gang members involved in a string of violent Dunkin' Donuts robberies in Broward and Palm Beach counties. Many of the horrific crimes caught on camera. A jury convicted Harrard for the brutal murder of a Dunkin' Donuts customer back in 2008. He received multiple counts of life imprisonment for that crime and other offenses. And now the same jury that convicted him says he deserves to die. Now it's up to the judge. Go ahead and do what you're going to do. Pretty much, you know what I mean? I pre I pretty much, I'm pretty much daring you to give me that sentence. Pretty much. Carol, imagine a babysitter that hurt a child on purpose, and not just one child, but several. That's what parents of some tiny victims told a judge today, asking for a long sentence for Alexis Sexton for the pain she caused their families. Robert Gann says his 14-month-old grandson, Noah Philhauer, will never be able to heal from the injuries he received when he was intentionally dropped by 19-year-old Alexis Sexton. He had brain swelling. He had blood on his brain. Um, he had three broken ribs. Gans now has custody of the boy and told the judge to show no mercy on the woman who preyed on innocent children. I just want her to receive the maximum amount you can give uh, for, her, the, the, for what she's done. Um, it's not fair to him to have something to deal with something for the rest of his life. The boy's mom cried as she talked about his injuries. She took him away from me almost. They said that if she would have dropped him on his head an inch to the left, it would have killed him. Others told the judge Sexton's actions are unforgivable. Kayla Lennon says Sexton fractured three of her daughter's fingers as they rode together in the same car. 
And I do ask that she gets punished and that justice is served for the children who don't have a voice. I would like to apologize to all my victims. I am truly sorry. I wish them nothing but the best in the future. Your Honor, all I really want is to get help. At her sentencing, Sexton spoke too, telling the judge she has a serious problem she can't control. And her mom, Jackie Yoakum, agreed. She asked the judge for mercy for her daughter because she's suffering too. She um, also admitted to me that she never told me this because she thought people would turn against her and think she was crazy. Now, several other family and friends spoke on Sexton's behalf, but in the end, the judge says because of the children she hurt and the seriousness of the crimes she committed, she had to go to prison. Christy Mack and her family have been waiting for this day for a long time. These charges come from an attack that actually happened back in 2014. But even with today's sentencing, Mack says that she'll always live with a certain amount of fear. But I do know when, when I get out, when he gets out, he will kill me. War Machine was facing 34 felony charges. He was found guilty on 29 of those, all in connection to the attack on his ex-girlfriend and the man she was dating at the time, Corey Thomas. From the testimony, this was a brutal attack. The ER doctor who treated Mac said that she had a broken nose, fractured a rib, broken facial bones, and lost teeth. He went on to say her liver was so damaged you could compare it to someone who had been in a car crash. Today, War Machine told the judge that he's been thinking about everything that's happened and he hates himself for it. I should have killed myself right now. There's no reason right now that I shouldn't be in the dirt right now laying by this Aaron Hernandez. Now, the defense team has mentioned filing an appeal, but regardless, War Machine will spend a long time in prison before that process even starts. From the Regional Justice Center, Yasmin Hassan, 13 Action News.